Okay, so uh, welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the tetanus neurotoxin. Okay, so we've now got this A subunit uh, in the uh, cytoplasm of the axon terminus of a, um, of a glycinergic inhibitory interneuron which synapses onto your alpha motor neuron. Now, we want to understand what this A subunit is going to do. So, in order to do that, we need to have a little revision of our snare proteins that we saw earlier. So let's say this is our synaptic vesicle, okay, and let's revise the structure of the snare core complex that is used to dock this synaptic vesicle to the plasma membrane. Well, basically, you have this V-snare, synaptobrevin 2, contributing M alpha helix to this core snare complex. You then have the uh, T-snare syntaxin 1, and let me colour these in. So synaptobrevin is in orange, so this is synaptobrevin 2 here. And let me bring it down a bit as well. Right, so this is synaptobrevin 2. And in fact, synaptobrevin 2 is going to be the, co is going to be the target for uh, tetanus neurotoxin. Okay, uh, here is syntaxin 1 here. Okay, so this is syntaxin 1. One and then finally you have also SNAP twenty five here here. Okay, so this is SNAP twenty five. And it supplies two alpha helices to uh, the snare core complex. So I colour SNAP twenty five in red. Okay, so this was absolutely essential for the formation of these docking complexes which dock the uh, vesicle to uh, the membrane of the presynaptic neuron and it was also absolutely essential for the actual fusion of the synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane. Okay, now tetanus neurotoxin then. It's going to come in here and it's going to cut synaptobrevin. So it's going to cut here. So tetanus neurotoxin cuts here. Interestingly, it cuts at the same point as the botulinum neurotoxin type B. So this is the same point as the botulinum neurotoxin B. However, it cuts it in different cells to botulinum neurotoxin B. Botulinum neurotoxin B cuts it in the axon terminus uh, terminal of the um, alpha motor neurons. Tetanus neurotoxin cuts it in the uh, axon terminal of these glycinergic inhibitory interneurons. If you cut the te uh, this synaptobrevin, then you don't form uh, core snare complexes anymore. You don't dock vesicles at the membrane, and you certainly don't fuse them with the membrane. You stop neurotransmission. These glycinergic inhibitory interneurons are going to stop releasing glycine sorry, onto uh, the alpha motor neurons. And when the, that happens, the alpha motor neurons start firing continuously, basically. Okay, uh, because glycine is inhibiting them, it's keeping their electrical potential difference across the membrane low by uh, activating channels which will allow chloride anions to come in. So, when the, the glycine stops, then you stop this inhibition of the alpha motor neurons, and uh, the alpha motor neuron over activates, basically, and it starts firing continuously. So it starts stimulating the muscle cells to contract continuously. Your muscle cells start to contract out of control and they are all contracting at once. This, um, syn well, this syndrome is known as spastic paralysis. So spastic paralysis. Now, what happens, some certain features that happen are the muscles of mastication, the muscles that you use to chew, those all start contracting. So your jaw is locked up, you're biting as hard as you can, basically. Uh, that um, symptom is known as lock jaw. So lock jaw means that all your muscles of mastication are contracted as much as they can, basically. Uh, in addition, what's going to happen is that your uh, the muscles of your back are all going to are all going to start contracting, um, and that starts to sort of you go into a certain position of being like so. Let me show you. If this is your, if I draw a stick man here, th well, actually, I'll draw him a bit more than that. Here's the torso. Okay, here are his two legs. His arms are going like that, 
and his head is going to be like here. Okay, <laughs> there. Can't draw people. Okay, uh, and this sort of symptom of being contracted in this position, stuck in this position, is known as episphotonus, episphotomus, or whatever. Episphotonus. Okay, so episphotonus is uh, one of the um, horrible uh, things that can occur if you have tetanus. Uh, so it's spastic paralysis. Now, what causes you to die? Uh, well, if this happens to the phrenic nerve, which it will do, then the diaphragm is going to just contract and it's going to remain contracted. It's not contracted, it's not going to relax. Now, in order to get the, uh, the um, uh, the bringing of air into the lungs, that you need the diaphragm contracting and then relaxing and contracting and relaxing. If you just contract it, yes, it will be stuck at the um, higher volume, uh, but you're not going to be getting fresh air being brought in, so it's going to stop the respiratory cycle, basically, and uh, you're going to get respiratory failure. So you get respiratory paralysis, this time a spastic respiratory paralysis. That stops you from being able to breathe, so you get respiratory failure. You no longer um, I'm sorry, I was writing respiratory paralysis. Uh, you no longer get enough oxygen to your peripheral tissues and you die of that, basically. So that's generally how people with tetanus die.